I was honest. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? How you address it is you face it. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life. I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. And it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have the tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those up questions and you are now in charge of your brain, versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man, this is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. So if you know that at 40%, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, wh what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Whatever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. A lot of people can live with themselves, look in the mirror and say, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm okay with going on this easy highway over here. The easy highway has all these signs and shit, directions, how to get somewhere. And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that say, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, okay, that's okay. It's okay to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're gonna get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities, it is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says, whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you want to be better, you realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we want to be, not who we are. 
the second you think that you've overcome it, you climbed Everest, you're on that last hold and life will say, <laughs> not today. And it'll push you down. Went to the mirror and the reflection in it revealed a lot of bad things. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror going like, God, dog, dude, you gotta, you are something else, man. Like you have created a character. It wasn't me. It wasn't who I was inside, but I was scared for anybody to know who I was inside. So in that accountability mirror, I call it, I got real with myself. And I said, you have a, a third grade reading level, which is hard to admit when you're a junior in high school that you copied on every single thing you did because a fear they're gonna put me in a special school we all know what special means I'm gonna have a, a title on myself the rest of my life and people say oh you know you have learned disability I don't learn disability but I realized I was lazy so um, I called myself out there I called myself out every which way possible I didn't call myself out I was just honest I was honest look at yourself man look at yourself and it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? I had to really wear this, this, this layer of skin. I had to develop a really callous skin on me to, to take whatever you're going to call me, you're going to call me. But whoever I am, you're going to see me. You're going to see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just, just became raw. And when I became fat over the years, I fell back in the hole, I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who you are, nothing's going to change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw. It, it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. So the first thing about it is once you realize it, and you have to realize it, you got to call yourself out. Addressing it is very small. It's, it, like, it doesn't go from like one morning, I'm um, this way, next morning I wake up and presto. The, you know, five steps to greatness. No, <laughs> it ain't that, brother. This is hard work. It's every day, like, like right now. I had to be honest with you, man. I'm even shaking right now being on this show. I'm a big time introvert. How you address it is you face it. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life where you say, okay, like if you're fat, you need to lose weight. It's patience. It's patience in this fact of accepting who you are right now. I'm fat, I don't like myself. Accepting the fact that if you lose three or four pounds, that's a huge accomplishment. You have to live in your own world. You cannot judge yourself. That's why social media and all these things are horrible. You can't judge yourself off of the so-called competition that we have made up in our mind. The things that, how people look, how people act, how smart someone is. This is a race that you run completely alone. And you're all by yourself. I had tons of sticky notes all over my mirror. It wasn't like be better than John or be as fast as whoever. Okay, David, yesterday you did this. Today, our next goal for the week is this. So I had a year goal, weekly goals, daily goals, hourly goals. I figured out these ways of total, total accountability. Are you accountable for what you're doing? Are you accountable? And I mean to the T for what you're saying. I am.